Hi, um, my name is Donica Hughes. I'm a sixth year student and composer from Dundalk and County Louth. And I'm delighted to be joined by uh, innovative and renowned composer Brian Irvine today. Uh, thanks so much for agreeing to talk to me, Brian. It's a pleasure to meet you, Donica, and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to, to, to chat with you. How I'd like to start uh, this interview is just an interview that my mum heard with an associate of Enya Marconi, uh, the famed composer. Marconi never wanted to be photographed with a piano because for him, he never composed with a piano. Now, this is, seems really alien to me because even when if I'm writing an eight-bar melody, I just have to be beside the piano. I can't, I can't do it. I was sitting on a desk. But this was Marconi's thing. He would just sit at the desk with the paper in front of him. So I was just wondering, um, what are your thoughts on this? And if you had to be photographed with anything to represent you as a composer, what would it be? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not sure what it would be. It'd probably be something like a surfboard or something. Um, you know, because, because I suppose in many ways, you know, it's about, I always feel that inventing music and making music is this kind of really super exciting uh, just journey. I'll tell you, I mean, I'll tell you one thing that really happened to me when I was actually probably around about your age, actually, which changed everything for me in relation to what I thought composition was. And um, it was basically, um, I started quite late in music. I used to play in sort of various bands and punk bands and stuff, and I never really had a piano until I was about 18, you know, which I rescued from the local scout troop who were just about to bash it up with the sledgehammer. Um, so I managed to get this piano into my garage and then I spent a lot of time in my garage footering around on the, the piano and I actually started to learn the piano and went to lessons and stuff eventually. But I didn't really go to piano lessons until I was about 18 or something. And um, and I used to sit in my garage with my scout troop piano, you know, uh, looking at things like, you know, Mozart sonatas, Beethoven sonatas and so on. And just the sheer volume of music that these guys had created. And I used to think to myself, geez, you know, how, how does somebody think of all this stuff and then put it down on paper? And then um, for all sorts of different reasons, I had this kind of light bulb moment where it was basically, I realized that that's not the way it works. The way it works is people have no idea what they're building when they start to build. And part of the biggest problem that you have as a composer is thinking that the music exists in your head and that you then write it down or that you sit at a piano and you invent something that you like and then you go from there. And what I realized was that all you need to do is to make a very, very, very small thing like one note or two notes and then that becomes a sort of thing that throws you onto the next thing and then that thing then throws you onto the next thing it's a bit like lego you only there's a few bricks and you start to build your 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 creation if you like but it's not necessary that you yeah so after three months of just putting these little bricks together with no idea of where you're going with these bricks after about three months of that you look back and you've created this massive massive thing which you could never have imagined at the beginning of the process and that was like a real light bulb moment because then i thought all oh, right i've got this now they didn't imagine this stuff they just started to build and then eventually okay. they ended up and they ended up with this thing just talking about the building and building a composition and creating something from nothing. Yeah. Um, what I find sometimes when I'm writing, if I like come up with an idea or a phrase and I add like a left hand, if I'm sitting at the piano or if I add another line, like, is there anything, is there a pattern or a process that you follow or that you find yourself following um, when you're making a smaller idea into something bigger, like for an orchestra or for a full arrangement for ensembles, say? Um, I mean, I have to say, Donica, that the answer to that is no. I don't have any processes at all, really. I know I, I sort of, I feel like I'm a sort of uh, rambling explorer of stuff, you know, and we'll, we'll grab anything and throw it in. And I don't really have any compositional processes. Now I'm aware of processes, you know, like I've studied quite a lot of different pieces and composers and... Uh, from all sorts of different dimensions of life, you know, everything from, 
you know, Boulez, the Messian, but also things like, you know, John Zorn and, um, you know, Arnett Coleman and Cecil Taylor and, you know, Napalm Death and, you know, all sorts of kind of music. Um, and so I'm, I'm aware of how a lot of people have done things. And I think as a young composer, that's probably the biggest single piece of advice I would give to you is listen and understand a ton of different music because there are processes, you know, there are sort of standard classical processes, you know, you know, you know, Schoenberg wrote the great book on sort of teaching composition, which was about, um, you know, retrograde inversion and all these kind of post-serialist and post-serialist techniques. Um, but then, you know, some of the most exciting music in the world has is unrelated to processes, you know, I think of, I think of people like Ornette Coleman, you know, um, or, um, you know, bands like The Clash or people like that, you know, they just, it's just, a, just about putting stuff together, sound stuff. So, so I feel very much like as a composer, um, everything is up for grabs and everything is um, usable. Like, I mean, I was writing a piece there recently for orchestra and it was like a violin piece. And um, I find myself thinking about a band called At The Drive-In here, like an American post-punk band. Um, who used to just play ridiculously fast, ridiculously loud, and literally throw themselves against the wall as they were doing it, you know? And so as I was writing this violin concerto, which was about, it was about emotion, actually, a feeling, I find myself kind of going into my head, going into this kind of at the driving sort of moment where I was just thinking about at the driving and all of a sudden all this stuff appears in the orchestra, which is about at the driving, you know, and it's like nothing to do with anything, but it feels kind of right. And so I, I think of it like a big endless toolbox of stuff, you know, that um, you, you can draw from. Just moving on from that, just researching, I couldn't believe the amount of collaborations you've done with singers and sculptors, painters, poets. And um, I'm just wondering, like, does that ever phase you? If you're launching into something with, like, the first time writing with, like, a poet or doing a project with a poet, does that phase you? Are you concerned that you won't get, like, what you want at the end? No, because um, I think the thing about collaboration is that, um, you know, we both maybe can go into a corner of a room and make something which, you know, requires only us to make it. Once you start a collaboration with someone, you're building something that you alone are not capable of building, you know. And so the process of, um, like, if I think of something like an opera, you know, I mean, there's a great there's a great disservice done to all the people involved in operas because in, historically, operas have been about the composer, you know, but the operas are not about the composer. The operas are this massive kind of collaboration, these highly creative artists, you know, and everyone is working on the same level, whether you're the composer or the guy um, designing the set or the 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 the, 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 the costume designer or the lighting designer like everyone's working on the same level and I think all collaborations are about knowing that all people are equal all ideas are valid and you know it's about creating an exchange which is um going somewhere that you wouldn't be able to go on your own I came across an interview with uh, John Williams who had said uh, well the interviewer asked him about how engrossing his work became all engrossing yeah. and um he just said like it takes up all his time when he's writing yeah. and I just wanted to get your opinions on, on that like I can find myself you know like just writing instead of doing my homework or whatever do you know <laughs> like it's not the best idea but uh, like how do you find how all-encompassing does it yeah. become? Well it's completely all-encompassing for me in some ways now that doesn't mean like I, I as I say I get bored quite easily but actually the the act of making is a huge part of my life, you know, and, and I also paint and stuff. So I s spend a lot of my time, you know, just making stupid stuff. Um, but I'm also involved in, um, like I'm very involved in young people in education and something I'm very passionate about is 
trying to allow people um, into the door of composition because it's like I find this, I feel like sometimes I find this amazing labyrinth of toys and brilliance and fun and excitement, you know, and I, I, I love being able to show people the door to that place, you know, and say, like, once you go through there, <laughs> your life's going to change, you know, and then they go into this place and they go, wow, what is this? This is amazing. I know. <laughs> it's another world. It's another world, you know. We're writing eight formalities and you have to follow this chord structure and that chord structure and you're not getting, going to get the marks if you don't do that. Yeah. But like, I find like there's a lot of people in the class that are like really musical and yeah. could like definitely have something to contribute to project yeah. or to contribute to music as a whole if they were just allowed, you know, the time to come up with something themselves instead yeah. of being like, you can't do that because you're not going to get yeah. marks. And yeah. I mean, you touch upon something there which is quite close to my heart, you know, which is, um, you know, a composition, I think is like, um, like you do music in school and uh, your music teachers are <clears throat> probably brilliant at all sorts of different things. But I always think that composition is like a completely different subject almost, you know, and it's hard, I think, for schools and hard for teachers to really understand what composition is. Because even at the, the sort of exam level, it's kind of something, but it's not really clear what it is. And and that's why I, this whole idea of having composers um, actively engage with skills, I think is so important because mm. what they do is just like, it's just a different animal. And I mean, composers like from all dimensions of music, you know, like, I mean, I've finished just doing a, a collaboration with a very good friend of mine, David Holmes, you know, a, does a lot of films, you know, and, um, and uh, David's probably one of the most successful film scorers in Europe, you know, huge, you know, hugely um, successful film score. He couldn't tell you the notes in the C major chord, nor does nor nor does he care, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's one of the most successful film composers of all time, you know, and he's huge, you know. And um, uh, and so I think that very fact tells you that composition is a different animal, different beast than what you might understand music to be at school, and that's why it's so important to have composers in skills, talking to young people about what it actually is, you know. Mm -hmm. Recently, we were working on a project actually with uh, the Leash Youth Trad Orchestra, I think I've said it right, Leash Music Generation <laughs> Trad Orchestra. Yeah. And um, it was actually great just to see what people would come up with. We were all, we met on Zoom every week and we were just yeah. told to go away for the week. He showed us, uh, Martin Turris was the composer who was like kind of organising it. And he would just show us videos or... Um, yeah inspiration I guess and material to work with and we just go away for the week and it was great to see what people would come back with because there's people like you know who had never done anything like that before and he was yeah. like just go away and see what you come up with and then bring it all back and we'll mush it all together and I find that like that was the first time I kind of you know done something like that before so you know you're you're listening to the music now we're looking at the the music that's came about from it and like you see your wee idea there yeah. that you came up with or you know the next person <laughs> and it's all kind of mushed together yeah. so it is like I find it really rewarding that way Okay, it's just so much fun, I think, isn't it? You know, it's just um, it's just fun. The word fun tends to be undervalued a lot, I think, you know. And the like somebody somebody once said to me, um uh yeah, lighthearted doesn't necessarily mean lightweight, you know, and that, that sense of approaching things in a very fun way is 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 the key i think to, to life actually i think it's the key to everything and um, you know if it's not if there's no fun don't do it and, and and when i say that i mean like i just as i said just finished this um big opera which is about rosemary kennedy the younger sister of jfk getting a lobotomy you know at the age of 23 it's like the darkest subject matter you can possibly deal with yeah, yeah. You say the process of making it with all the people involved in the opera was just the most fantastically fun experience. Such a joyful experience. Just so much crack, so much laughter. Yeah. You know, but we're dealing with like the worst subject matter in the world. The process is the most important, you know. Is this a fun process? Because if it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably get out of there. <laughs> well, that's such a challenge though, like with a, um, a subject matter like that, is like bringing out the the light mm. and the dark bringing out the contrast and the color like mm. i just you know it must be it must be something really challenging to 
make it, it's you know, not, make it more enjoyable for the audience too. It's not, I mean, I never really think about the audience too much, really. I mean, I just think mm. what what do I think is interesting? And uh, that particular project that I mentioned, the Rosemary Kennedy project, I mean, it it reflects, I think, the way that I would write a lot of pieces, and that is that we have created a sort of 80 minute show or something and um, which boils down to if you divide it down it boils down to about sort of 13 14 different sort of fragments if you like okay. um, but whenever I was making that project I had no idea what it was I was making but I made a lot of stuff and I made somewhere like 42 fragments which of which we ended up using 13 you know, kind of, it was just a massive outpouring of thoughts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we could have actually made a whole different piece, which was just a whole bunch of different fragments put together, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It could have ended up anywhere else, you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Exactly, exactly yeah. yeah. No, that's definitely, that's what I would find in my composition as well. It's more of like an organic process, not like, yeah. So you know, when researching this and researching composition in general, you come across like a good few uh, composers who, sit down and like they have a plan out and they have yeah. you know A to B and A, B, C and all in between do you know yeah. Yeah. and it's just I just didn't really think it was for me but it's great to hear your thoughts on the, on the matter as well do you know I mean I think yeah, I think um, like having seen some of your music and I think I get a sense of where you're where you're at and the things that interest you you're interested in film music you're interested in traditional music you're interested in classical composition and all of that is such such a brilliant kind of spectrum to draw upon um i i would sort of you know i i would sort of really dive into really exploring lots and lots and lots of different people in that sort of area you know, yeah being in that field because i always think of composition is just about um I, i'm really skeptical of the process that you're just telling me about you know a b is going to do this yeah of course this, yeah because I think that it's like, um, I think it's more like the analogy for composition for me is more like sculpting, you know, where you have this, just this kind of two ton block of clay or something. Mm -hmm. And all you're really doing is digging into it and discarding things, you know, and that process of discarding stuff, I think is very important, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so then eventually the, the you're left with something at the end. Yeah. And it sort of emerges out of all that rather Mm -hmm. than you saying, as this is what I'm going to build, you know. You've probably touched on a good few of them through the course of the interview, but just to sum up, um, for, for young composers, what are three the three best bits of advice, or best advice that you ever got in composition? I mean, I hate giving advice to anyone, really, <laughs> but ultimately because um, I don't know, and for everyone, everyone is different, but I would say that it's really, really important that you... Find a process of making music that is deeply joyful. You know, this whole notion about this sort of tortured artist struggling away in his corner trying to make the masterpiece, that's just a a myth. You know, the process of making, it has to be a joyful thing because this is your life and you want your life to be joyful. So everything that you build uh, should be done with a sense of genuine excitement and curiosity and joy, you know. And anything that becomes torturous, just move away from it. I suppose the only other thing I would say, Doug, is that um, like you started off the interview talking about processes, and I, I was sort of saying that, you know, the only thing that really matters is that you're really educated in music. Now, by that, I mean that you're aware of just so much music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't mean, you know, technically, I just mean that you're aware of what people are doing and have done. And um, like if I use the example of of David Holmes again, um, David was a DJ um, and um, he knows nothing about the technicalities of music in terms of harmony theory and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I remember the first time I met David, which was about 35 years ago or something, you know, and um, he was a DJ. And I went and we going around to his house and um, and I walked into his house and he had lived in his own and he had like a sort of four bedroom house. 
And every single wall in that house was covered with literally thousands of LPs. And he knew more about music than I've ever known anyone to know. Still couldn't, wow. couldn't tell the notes in a C major chord. But his love of finding out about music yeah. was so enormous, you know. And he could uh, he could pick a record out of that. When we used to make records together in the early, we used to make sort of early house music records. And he used to pull out a record. He'd say, right, Brian, I want a bass line like that. And so I would listen to the bass line and play the bass line. And, uh, and then he'd say, I want a, a, a melody like this. And I'd listen to the melody and play the melody. And he'd just go to these records and pick out stuff. Yeah. You know? It's a great way of working, you know. Just thanks so much for talking to me today. It was really, really informative for me and definitely for everyone watching. I think it was, it was brilliant. Thanks a million. No, it's a pleasure, Donnie. And listen, the best of luck with all your music. You know, you, you, the music you sent over is fantastic and it shows like a real kind of sense of energy and uh, excitement about it. You've, you've definitely got something going on there, you know, so keep, keep doing what you're doing.